the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. This is Vandalist Pat Talbert. Glad to be with you again today. We're continuing our lesson. We started with Pulling Down Strongholds, a series of lessons on discipling people and helping them through as they recycle and recover. All of us are broken. When we get saved, uh, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. His death and burial and resurrection on the cross and uh, his resurrection and what he's done for us and Christ in is the hope of glory the Bible says so as we get Christ in our life there's a Christian walk I have a book that I use in a follow-up called the Christian walk Dr. Jim Kesey put it out it's called the Christian walk I use for folks after they accept Jesus as their Savior it's very important that they understand how to grow as a Christian. The Bible says that we're to grow in grace. We're saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. After we receive Christ and we start recycling our lives, renewing our minds through the Word of God, He tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, that uh, we're to present our body a living sacrifice and then we're to be renewed in the spirit of our minds. Uh, being renewed in your mind, renewing your mind is what we call repentance. I'm repenting from my old way of life and I'm going to the new way and I've decided not to be my own God and let Jesus be the God and the Lord of my life and let Him into my heart. And when I turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, when someone introduced me to Jesus, uh, my life started changing very quickly as the Holy Spirit started leading me and guiding me and convicting me and I had to reprogram my whole life. People that deal with alcoholics, people that deal with drug addicts, people that deal with anger, people that deal with uh, different abuses and the homes and stuff uh, from their past cycles of life had to be renewed. And when we're in this series of what we call soul winning, we're learning uh, how to hear from God and walk in the Spirit. I go out and I introduce people to Jesus and I come back and I'm all happy and everything and I said, how'd you do it? They don't know that I just found somebody that Jesus had ready already and he gave him the plan of salvation or her the plan of salvation and they accepted Jesus into their heart. It wasn't very hard. I just found the ones that somebody already prayed for, somebody been interceding for, some family member been praying, some mother, some grandmother, some church, some class had been interceding, and that's the ministries of our church. Uh, some of our senior citizens are the best prayer warriors we got for intercessory prayer. So when we go soul winning, we want to make sure we understand that uh, there's, a, there's a program that we have, it's a plan that we have, so we know how to introduce a person to Jesus. Uh, we said that a person, number one, need to H-A-V-E. You had to have a million dollars to be a millionaire. You had to have Christ in order to be a Christian. Uh, there's a lot of people know about Christ. Even the devil believes in Jesus and trembles, the Bible says. Having Jesus and knowing about him is two different things. So we talk about having Christ, and then we talk about this system here of salvation is in a person. If you've got to have Christ, then salvation we review on this just for you to understand where we come from. Salvation's in a person, and we know that that person is Jesus. So if salvation is in a person, soul winning is introducing that person to Jesus. The Bible says that uh, we're to pray the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth labors. He says the field's white and ready for harvest, but he says pray for labors. There's few. So there's few what we call soul winners or labors to go out and just tell people about Jesus that he's already got the field ready and wait for harvest. And we have the whole world right now is ready for the Lord Jesus Christ and ready for harvest. And what we find is is soul winning is introducing that person. And if that's the case, 
then we need a plan to do that. Uh, we go out every year to Daytona Beach. I've been gone for about 30 years now with Dr. Ron Riley with the Ambassadors for Christ. There's 300,000 on the beaches at spring break every year. And we cover 18 miles of beaches, uh, four teenagers on each block. And we have a chaperone that goes with them and prays. And they talk to everybody and give them the plan of salvation. We don't pass out tracts. We give the gospel plan of salvation. And we find the ones that God's got ready and introduce them to Jesus. And the ambassadors for Christ, Dr. Ron Riley, the 21st through the 24th this year, uh, in 23, they're going to have the missions trip again to Daytona. It's a missions trip to see the field, to see the people, and go through the hours of training that Dr. Riley and others go with the workers and the counselors that come and the youth directors, pastors that come from all over the world. I was there last year with people from uh, old Tallahassee, Florida, West Virginia, all over the country come. And we spend a whole day on fasting and praying and classes and ministering. And then we go out on the beaches. And that's the 21st of March this coming year in 23. But we teach them a plan. They need a plan on how to talk to people, whether it's on the beach or whether it's at a house or whether it's in a home, wherever it is. So we have a plan that we go through. Uh, but we have warnings uh, for folks uh, when they go out to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And these are called warnings for soul winners. Now the warnings for soul winners is the first thing we do is we get the prospect alone. Uh, we get the prospect alone because if you're talking to a, a group of people, a lot of times they're embarrassed around people around them, but if you take a, could I talk to you over here to the side, and you take them to the side, and you bring out your Bible and you lead him to Jesus. Now, if you get the prospect alone, it, it, it lets the Holy Spirit do the work it needs to do without the interruptions and the questions of other people around them. And uh, usually they'll wonder why, uh, why they're doing this and what it's all about. So we get the prospect alone, then we stay on target. By having a plan, we know where we're starting, and we're going to bring them face to face with Jesus for them to make a decision. Because salvation is in a person, that person is Jesus. They must have Jesus. So we try to stay on target. If you get off a of target and answer questions and stuff, we're not teaching a Sunday school class in the middle of an introduction. If I introduced you to Brother not Mike Clemens here or Brother Scotty Drake or uh, some of these, Dr. Uh, Ron Riley, if I start introducing you to them and stop right in the middle of the introduction and start teaching a Bible lesson, that'd be kind of rude. So we're in the middle of a soul winning program that we're going out to go soul winning and we don't teach Bible lessons and we don't answer questions. You say, what about all these questions they have? 90% of their questions come from the devil anyway. He's speaking through them and trying to throw you off track so you don't give them the gospel. 20 minutes later, you got to leave. They're in a hurry and nobody gets saved because you showed them how much you know about the Bible. But they needed a person. They needed Jesus to come into their hearts. So we stay on target and that's very important. Then we learn to distinguish between resistance and resentment. Some people have resisted the Holy Spirit will have a church service and give the gospel message and give an invitation and people resist it. And I pastored uh, churches and I've preached to many evangelistic meetings and stuff and I've seen people just hold on to the pew and they'd be under conviction and they would resist and finally they would let loose and come forward and uh, let Jesus come into their heart but they would resist. But people resent you have to learn the difference between the two. If I'm talking to a person at a house and they're resisting, I'll pursue on and just give them the gospel. So they'll understand and maybe the next person can come and lead them to Jesus, but I don't close the door. If they resist and they're resentful, I'll change the subject. I like that aquarium you got there in your house. Where'd you get that from? And how about that picture? And how about them kids and all this stuff? And I'll change the subject. 
and I leave the door open for the next soul winner who comes by and knocks on that door so they don't slam the door in their face. I'm not going to tell them they're going to fry like bacon, they're going to go to hell if they don't get saved. I'm going to leave the door open for somebody else to come by and do this. So I'm not going to teach a Bible lesson in the middle of an introduction. Uh, we went out soul winning one time and we was talking to a group of people up and down the streets and we told them to tell everybody about Jesus. We had two on one side and two on the other side. When we got through, an hour later, we couldn't find the first two and we went back and finally found them and they were standing there for over an hour talking to two Jehovah Witnesses debating the Bible. Everybody else had a blessing. They had people saved. They were happy. They were every, all excited. But these people decided to have a Bible study in the middle of an introduction. And they had nobody saved. They were very discouraged because they didn't learn to give the gospel and not teach a Bible lesson in the middle of introduction. So when we go to these programs, we want you to understand the approach, how to approach a person. Uh, we always talk to everybody we see. We don't pick, well, I think that one once saved or this one once saved. We talk to everybody we see when we go door to door or if we go on the beaches. We go and we talk to every person because we don't know who God's got ready. Now, when you go out and you go soul winning, you're going to find out that God has people ready. You might go a whole hour telling people about Jesus and plant the gospel seed. And then the next hour, you might have five people except Jesus. So God gives the increase. So you got to understand, number one, the nature of man. If I go up to a person and say, are you saved? You're going to go to heaven. They're going to duck. Because the nature of man is uh, they're not used to that type of an approach. And they'll duck and they'll say, well, I'm not interested in that. I don't believe in God and all this. And they'll start off with all that stuff. Uh, what you got to understand is if you understand the nature of man and then you understand the nature of Jesus, he's kind. He's sweet. He's loving. He's long-suffering. He's gentle. He has tolerance. He has endurance. Uh, he waited years for me to be saved and was very patient and sent a little old lady to me and told me about Jesus and very kind and very gentle. And I was open. They didn't close my spirit. So that's very important. So we understand that when we understand the nature of man, we've got to understand that we're working with what we call the Holy Spirit. Now, 90% of soul winning is the work of the Holy Spirit. And if soul winning is very hard for you, it's because you're doing the work of the Holy Spirit and uh, He doesn't want you to do that. That's His job. And the Holy Spirit was sent here uh, to do that work. And no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw him. So when we present the gospel, we're just presenting the gospel with the Spirit doing its work. So we're doing what we're call, we're going the distance. When I say we're going the distance, I'm, I'm, I'm a starting off here with about three approaching questions. I'll ask them question number one, question number two, question number three. And then at that point, if they're open, I will and the Holy Spirit's got them ready, I will go into four Bible verses. And I go into the first verse, the second verse, the third verse, and the fourth verse. And then they're confronted with the Lord Jesus Christ. My goal is to bring them the whole distance from way over here all the way to meet Jesus. And to do that, I've got to have an approach. Uh, so what happens is in this plan that we're going through with, we're trying to teach folks that they've got to understand going the distance and this approach. We're trying to get a person to where they have Jesus. Now, I asked the question before, if you've got to be a millionaire and you want to be a millionaire, what do you got to have? Some people say wealth. Some people say money. No, you have to have a million dollars. And in order to be a Christian, salvation is in a person. So they must have Christ in order to be a Christian. So if I asked a person today, like this people over here, what do you got to have in order to be a Christian? They'll raise their hand and they'll say, well, I think you got to have Christ, all right? So what I would do by faith, since everything we do is by faith, I would take my A 
and I'd pass it out to them, and they had to catch it by faith. And I'd say, if salvation is in a person, then they must have Christ. So then a soul winner is a what? A soul winner is an introducer. This person over here calls out an introducer, and I'd throw him an A, okay? And he'd catch it by faith. So what we're doing is systematically, we're going through a plan here. And as we go through it systematically, you don't have to think about what am I going to say next. We're learning a plan on what to say in each step so that when they get to Jesus, they can make a decision and we can sit back and watch and not worry about what we're going to say. We know what we're going to say and we can watch the Holy Spirit work. We can watch the conviction come over them. We can watch the tears come through their eyes. I was on a beach in Daytona last year, and they put me out uh, at a boardwalk where you go over to get onto the beach, and there was people sitting there all around, and I just, I, I wanted to go to the first people I see to talk to first before I even hit the sand on the beach. And I saw these two little old ladies sitting there, and I walked up and I asked them uh, where they're from, and they told me where they were from. We talked a little bit, and I said, well, we're out from the Ambassadors for Christ, and we're on the beaches telling people about Jesus and how to go to heaven and I talked to them a little bit and I started to ask them about their salvation and uh, asked them what a Christian is and she says sir I can't talk about that and she says why is that I asked her she says I'm with Angel Tree and this lady here that I have in the wheelchair sitting right here she wanted to come see the ocean and she has been given two weeks to live and she wanted to see the ocean at Daytona Beach before she died, so I brought her out here. I said, well, let me explain to you then what Jesus says about it. And I went through the plan of salvation and here's the little lady sitting there. I said, would you want Jesus to come into your heart and would you open the door? And she says, yes, and tears rolling down her face. She let Jesus in her heart. See, the Holy Spirit prepare her heart, the Holy Spirit put her in the right place. I show up, give the plan of salvation, and she gets saved. She had two weeks to live. That's what the Holy Spirit does in soul winning. It's so exciting because you come back and you say, we had some people saved, but you know that God got them ready. God did the work. So as we systematically go through the plan and tell people about Jesus, the Holy Spirit goes through it automatically. I'm talking to a person about Jesus and the Holy Spirit's making Jesus real to them. You can't make Jesus real. Nobody in this building has seen Jesus, but everybody believes in him and everybody prays to him and everybody talks to him. That's because the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to make Christ real. So when I approach a person, I understand that the Holy Spirit is my partner and my Holy Spirit is speaking to them and I can look at them and watch them and see the work of the Holy Spirit operating as I talk to them. So I'm going to have an approaching question. I might ask the person this question right here. Number one, are you interested in spiritual things? Well, everybody is. Yeah, I went to church when I was a kid. I believe in God and this and that. And they're going to tell me all about it. And I said, well, have you ever thought about becoming a Christian. And they say, well, I was baptized when I was a baby. Well, everybody knows that getting baptized doesn't make you a Christian. It's having Jesus that makes you a Christian. So I says, well, have you ever thought about becoming a Christian? They say, well, I've done this or I do good and I try to live a good life and everything else. So that's, that's good. I'm so glad what you're doing. It doesn't matter what they answer me. I'm going to the next question. If someone were to ask you, your best friend asked you, what is a Christian? What would you say? They say, well, Jesus died on the cross and Jesus did this and Jesus did that. And I said, well, I understand that. I agree with that. He did all those things. I know you know all about Jesus. And they say, well, he's, uh, he's taught this in the Bible. And he's taught that in the Bible. And that's good. I said, that's, I agree with all that. But your friend didn't ask you about the Bible. They asked you, what is a Christian? What would you tell your friend if they asked you what a Christian is? Uh, 
you tell them what you believe, you tell them what the Bible says, but you're not telling them what a Christian is. They ask you what a Christian is, and they say, well, if it's okay with you, I, I don't know, you tell me what a Christian is. And I says, if it's okay with you then, I would like to read you four verses of Scripture. I'll explain them to you. Then you'll know what God says a Christian is. Would that be okay with you? Sure. Most people will go along with you. And that's our introduction and that's our approach and telling people about Jesus. Remember, we're not teaching a Bible lesson. We're not teaching a systematic theology. We're teaching a person about how to have the one who created them that died on the cross, was buried and rose again, how to have the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time the Holy Spirit works, when you go out to witness for Jesus, every time the Holy Spirit works, it's exciting. And for a new Christian that's growing in Christ, watching that Holy Spirit do that and watching the Holy Spirit convict reminds them of what the Holy Spirit did in their life when they received Christ. And when they started renewing their life for Jesus Christ and saved by grace through faith, and they want other people to have what they've got. So they're excited about it. So the works and seeing the results of all that helps encourage. The Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. Uh, when those little ladies on that beach accepted Jesus, the anointing of God come upon them and they cried and asked Jesus to come in their heart two weeks to live. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I was just going out into the field. The fields were white and ready for harvest. But the Lord said, pray that we'll send labors because he's preparing the hearts. He's looking for you to present a program to them just to plan on how to accept Jesus into their heart. So we're going to continue with this as we continue and go into it a little bit deeper, help you to understand the important things, but before we go farther, uh, I'm going to go through seven uh, transitional lines that I use to go from one verse to the other. I'm going to go through the verses, then I'm going to go through the transitional lines in our next lesson, so you can listen real well and listen to this, and I know how to go from one verse to the next and explain it, and I'm going to give two illustrations with the verses so they'll understand, emotional word picture, understand what that verse means because we want them to understand. Uh, people do not make false professions of faith. They're led into it. We want them to understand what God says a Christian is and how to have Christ. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, prepare hearts. Prepare a plan that we can introduce Jesus and anoint. And Father, we're praying for labors that will go into the field. You said, he that wins souls is wise. So anoint and bless and prepare the hearts of those, Lord, that you're calling to this ministry and the Great Commission. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I...